Hey, I'm Sandro. Today we're going to be looking at this customized loop pedal. Let me show you how I did it myself. So I've been playing guitar since I was about 11 years old and I've always considered purchasing a loop pedal but never did because I don't know. I started listening to Ed Sheeran's music and all of it revolves around the loop pedal. After watching a few of his videos I noticed that he had some funky looking thing that I saw and I was like what the f is that? So after doing a little bit of research I learned that he uses a customized pedal board that was made specifically for him and for his live performances. So of course I thought hey I'm gonna make my own. So uh, let me get into that a little bit more, okay? The heart of this project will run off of a laptop. Now we will be taking this apart, so you're gonna wanna have one that you're willing to sacrifice. Of course, the more reliable the laptop, the more reliable your pedal board will be. So choose wisely. The second thing you're gonna need is a two channel audio interface. I'm using an M-Audio Fast Track. The next thing you're gonna need is an Arduino Nano. You will also need about eight or nine foot pedals. A couple of fans aren't necessary, but they'll be used inside of the pedal board to keep it cool. And finally, the last thing you're going to need is a MIDI input. Of course, there's going to be more used in this project, but these are some of the main things that you're going to want to consider getting. Now, before starting anything, I really wanted to lay out the design of this pedal board. I really liked how Ed Sheeran's pedal board is laid out. I like how simple the design is, so I really use this as a reference point. I started by drawing out what I wanted. So I put the screen in the top right corner and all the pedals at the bottom, uh, with the exception of the undo and the clear button. Now on the back of this, I put the inputs, uh, the outputs, the power, and all of that stuff. One of the key things that I wanted to implement into this is to have an all-in-one system. What I found through my research is that Ed Sheeran and a lot of the other people who have made pedal boards to resemble Ed Sheeran's use an external laptop. I wanted to build the laptop into the pedal board, and this way, if I'm playing a live performance, all I have to do is bring my pedal board, plug it in, and go. Let's start this off by getting our pedals to talk to the computer. What we're going to be using for this is our Arduino Nano and our MIDI input. We're first going to start this by grounding the MIDI input using the top middle pin. From here we're going to take the middle left pin and solder this to the 5 volt connector on the Arduino Nano. Between this we'll have a 220 ohm resistor. We will also be connecting the middle right pin to the TX1 input on the Arduino Nano. This will also have a 220 ohm resistor between it. The final step will be taking all the pedals and grounding them to the Arduino Nano. And the positive cable from each of the pedals will go to their corresponding digital input on the Arduino Nano as well. Essentially what we're doing here is we're creating our own MIDI controller. This will allow us to talk to the software within the computer. To understand how this will work a little bit better, the Arduino Nano will get its power via USB from the computer. From here, when a pedal is clicked, it will send a MIDI signal all the way into the audio interface. The audio interface will then talk to the software within the computer. Now obviously it's not as easy as just plugging these pedals into the Arduino Nano. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut the wire and then solder these separately. Now when you cut this wire, you're going to see two separate wires. It doesn't matter which one you take, um, as long as you take one, you ground that one, and then you take the other one and you put that to the digital pin. Now another thing we're going to have to do is add the code into the Arduino Nano to tell it what to do. So because I don't actually know how to write this code, I actually got a template from notesandvolts.com. Uh, he's a guy, he's got a YouTube channel as well. Uh, he's pretty descriptive. I'll link his video and I'll also put the link to the code itself in the description below. Once I knew everything was up and running, it was then time to take the laptop apart. I started by taking the keyboard off and got rid of anything I really didn't need, such as the plastic parts, uh, the CD drive, which is just taking up space, um, and anything that was just extra weight, like a battery and all of that stuff. Now take your time when you're doing this. You definitely don't want to damage anything because the last thing you need to do is buy another laptop. Once I had everything apart, I then tested it, and then I moved on to adding a customized on and off switch. This took a lot of trial and error to find out where I needed to solder the switch onto. But once I had it up and running, everything was working smoothly. The next step was to condense the laptop. I decided by putting the motherboard on the back of the screen, I was able to make it a lot smaller. This way I was able to make the pedal itself smaller as well. I cut up some pieces of wood and then mixed up some two-part epoxy. This allowed me to securely screw the motherboard into the back of the screen without damaging anything. From here I went on to making the case of the pedal board itself. I cut down some plywood to the appropriate sizes using the table saw. 
Now I added a slight angle to the pedal board itself where the back is a little bit higher than the front, but essentially this case is as easy as building a box. I then measured and drew out where I wanted the screen to be and then cut this using a jigsaw. From here I routed over the edges and tried to make it look pretty. The next step was to prepare the pedals themselves. What this involved was taking apart each pedal and then drilling a hole into the center. The reason I did this was to hide each of the cables. This allows me to have the cables go into the case rather than stick out of the case. While doing this I was also able to lay out where I wanted all the pedals to sit and then I was also able to pre-drill the holes while doing this. Once I was done with this, I then took all the pedals off and then glued the case together. With the exception of the bottom piece, this will allow me to have access to the inside of the case when it's done. Now that being said, on the bottom piece, I measured out where I wanted the fans to go and the ventilation to be. I used two extra fans and I also took the plastic vent from the laptop itself. This will allow the built-in fan to also have ventilation as well. The next step was to measure and drill out where I wanted the interface to lie and all the inputs and outputs to be. This includes the power for both the audio interface and the laptop itself. I'll show you more about this later on in the video. Once everything was cut and drilled out, I then took the case to the belt sander to round over a lot of the edges and to clean up a lot of the blemishes and all the crap that was going on with it. I then stained it using an ebony stain. The next step was to assemble all of the pieces. I started by mounting the computer into the case. I held the computer in using screws by drilling through the plastic. And of course I didn't drill through the screen so don't do that. The next step was to add in the audio interface. I did this using a pressure fit by adding a block of wood that holds the interface where it needs to be. This way I know that the interface won't move and I'm also able to take it in and out of the case if I need to. I then added the on and off switch and then moved on to adding the pedals into where they needed to go. Once the pedals were secure I then reassembled them and then fed the cables through to the bottom of the case. Now for the clear button I did add a different type of switch but it works exactly like the other switches that I've showed you. To get the power to the audio interface, what I did is I created an extension cable for the DC in. I also created an extension cable for the outputs that are found on the back of the interface. As well as the RCA outputs as well. This just allowed me to arrange the outputs on the back of the pedal the way I wanted to. The next step was to find a clever way to mount the Arduino Nano. I glued and screwed the USB power cable to a block and then mounted this inside of the case. Once this was mounted, I then plugged in all the pedals into the Arduino Nano. The next step was to mount the fans to the bottom of the case. I gave these fans power by simply using a USB cable. I took the positive and negative from the cable and matched that with the positive and negative from the fan. This way when the computer turns on, this will trigger the fan to turn on as well. It's pretty simple. Once everything was plugged in and put together, it was time to close up the case. I held the bottom piece together using screws. This way I'm able to take it apart if I need to go back inside. To finish it off, I added some rubber feet as well as some branding and some logos and stuff. How I did this is I printed it off on my desktop printer and then I used some Mod Podge to uh, let it stick. And once I was finished putting all the stickers and stuff on, the pedal was complete. So the last thing I should probably talk about is the software within the computer. For my pedal, I went with using Sonnet Looper. Now this did cost me about 30 pounds, but it, it was definitely worth it because it's super simple, it's clean, and it's everything I really wanted in a software. Now a free alternative to this is to use Mobius. This will work just as good and will cost you absolutely nothing. Now I'm gonna link both of these below, just pick which one you think works better for you. All right, so I hope that was informative enough for you guys to throw one of these together yourself and uh, let me know if you're able to do it. Feel free to shoot a comment or whatever, you know, the YouTubers say. And uh, yeah, if you uh, need any help, I'm, I'm always here to help. So take it easy. Ooh.